Okay, now before I tear this PTB a new one, let's get the one good thing out the way first. The Skull Merchant, she's kind of high. That's one point. Now, I can't really give the PTB anything lower than a 1.5, okay? We got that out the way? Okay, Tools of Torment, yeah, it's pretty bad. The new PTB came out today for the upcoming chapter, Tools of Torment, and right when we thought that DVD would actually release a chapter without it getting leaked, it got leaked mere hours beforehand, and by God, is this probably the biggest disappointment since the Legion chapter, where the teasers made it out to be cooler than it actually is. The killer is just some random chick. Come on, get your jokes out. She looks like a Rainbow Six Siege operator. She looks like she belongs in Apex Legends. We get it. Come on, let's just go this is literally like a repeat of what happened for the trickster chapter where dbd does this weird different way of marketing their chapters just to hype it up only for it to just be a major flop when it releases everyone was expecting a robot killer you were teasing a robot killer nothing about your teasing made it seem like we just get a random chick i actually agree with everyone this is one of the most uninspired designs out of any killer in the entire game. How do you go from this to this? That's that's like mind boggling. Now complaints about the killer not being what we expected aside. Is she any, no, she's not good. She's very, 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 very bad. She, oh, my. I'm being really honest here, guys. Like I'm trying to search for things nice to say about this killer, but I, I'm, I'm, I, I'd have to be reaching arms longer than Mr. Fantastic to find good things about this killer. Basically, the killer can set up surveillance drones that once they're placed, they go into active mode. And when they're in active mode, they search around for survivors. And when a survivor is caught in the active mode, they start getting scanned. Now, when the survivor gets scanned completely, they suffered from the exposed status effect. That is pretty much the only use for the drones they covered a pretty wide area probably the length of a killer shack and they just search for survivors and survivors when they stay in it for too long they become exposed that's pretty much it if the drone doesn't spot the survivor it'll go into this idle mode where it's like this kind of sonar and while it's in the sonar it'll just continue scanning for survivors if a survivor gets caught in the sonar beam it goes back to active mode if not it kind of just sits there and does nothing now, while it's in the sonar mode, the survivors can actually dodge the beams in order to deactivate the drones. However, once they do that, they'll get sticked with this bug type thing. And while they have this bug thing on their arms, they will be able to be tracked by the killer using her little radar. Um, and it goes across the map. So basically, if a survivor has that stick bug on their arm, you'll be able to track them from across the map using the radar. Yeah, this killer is not that good. This killer basically suffers from the exact same issues as Knight, where you just place your drone and you hope that survivors stay in it long enough. So hypothetically, you'd place it in loops but then once you place it in loops, the survivor can just run away. Now, unlike Knight, she doesn't get slowed down when she throws up her drones. So she has that over the old lad. But that being said, it's still pretty useless. Um, it seems like where this killer really shines is in her add-ons. She's got some really wacky add-ons that make her power a little bit interesting to use, but still not great. And yeah, I've seen videos of people trying to use this power and it just is not working. I really don't know what they were thinking when they were designing this killer. I'd want to think that they were using it with zoning in mind, kind of like what they did with Knight. But this power requires so many little conditions for it to even be remotely useful. I don't see what they were thinking just this entire chapter in general feels like a huge afterthought the survivors are pretty cool their brother and sister uh they got some busted perks though the 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 brother's perk straight up lets you have two sprint bursts in a row if you wanted to this perk is going to be the new dead hard i can tell straight up this perk is going to be used so much the other perks are kind of just rehashes of old perks the sister has a better quick and quiet and another version of blood pact 
this the brother has like a weird uh, like exhaustion perk where you get a speed boost after saving someone it, it's weird the perks in this ptb feel very copy paste and kind of mid and that kind of begs the question what was going on when they were making this chapter the killer feels so bad there's nothing that she has that can help her in chase you can argue all you want that drones will help you in chase drones will only help you in chase if the survivor is dumb enough to not realize that they're being scanned by a flying skull in the air the range is good sure but it doesn't warrant putting it in loops if the survivor is just gonna go to a different loop. Now, maybe if the drone had a shorter range and maybe followed survivors after they scanned them, or maybe the scan was faster and the exposed duration was shorter, maybe if the drones had a set like movement path, something. But as of right now, this killer is not great. They are very, very, very bad. She looks like they tried to recreate my character in GTA Online. Um, yeah, this chapter is a mess. And I'd probably go so far as to say that it's low-key worse than the night chapter. Yeah, this is not a great start to uh, 2023 for DVD. That being said, she is hot. So it's a five out of five.